Welcome to the Call Center Crew Podcast, where we educate, empower, and help you execute in the everyday grind that is Contact Center. We bring you the expertise and success from industry professionals around the world. Listen in or watch weekly every Wednesday at callcentercrew.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Call Center Crew Podcast. This is your host, Landon Rich. Uh, Today, I'm coming uh, from northern Utah yet again, and I have uh, a longtime friend and and colleague here on the show today. Super excited to be bringing you his his knowledge in specifically sales. Um, But uh, Sam Foster, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thanks, Landon. Good to be here. Um, So, Sam, let's, uh, let's dive in a little bit on your background how you got in? Well, uh, before we do that, let's. Uh, I just want to remind everybody who's listening. Uh, you can also check out the video version on YouTube and callcentercrew.com, uh, and then obviously the audio version on iTunes and Google Play. Go ahead and uh, give us a give us a share, five star review, and uh, again, we're here to educate and uh, help those in the call center industry and and in general uh, execute in their in their daily roles so again callcentercrew.com uh, check us out and give us a share um, Sam give us a little bit of background about you where you know where'd you where'd you come from how'd you get into the industry and kind of what's your experience in it uh, that's a great question um, and I and I get asked a lot you know I've got a lot of like young sales guys that want to get kind of fast track into what my role is today. What's the key? Yeah. How do I, how do I get to be a call center manager or yep. sales director or whatever? How do and I, it's make always, the, how do I, how do I make the big, how do I, big, how do I make the yeah. big bucks? How do I make the big bucks and never sleep? Yeah. That's really <laughs> should be the question. Um, the, the, the funny answer, the, I guess the real answer is I, um, and what I tell people is like this industry does not, this is not an industry that you go to grade school and you ask the five-year-old, you know, the, the little five-year-olds, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> no, I want most, to manage call centers. Most kids want to be astronauts and firemen and fire and policemen yeah. and, you know, whatever, doctors and lawyers and, you know, nobody says they want to be a call center manager at all. And um, so I... I I kind of tongue in cheek say things like this, this industry really chooses you. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a very high burnout as most people that are probably listening to this understand and they know, um, I was actually leaving active duty. I was leaving the military and I was in, uh, what they call SEPs. It's like a separations class where they're basically teaching you how to be a civilian. Getting again. back into civilian life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're teaching you about different jobs you might be qualified for. And they give you kind of this list. They give me like a piece of paper and I'm, I'm going through there and they're like, what do you think you're qualified for? And as I'm going through the list, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I look at like telemarketing. I'm like, I'll do any job, but that one, (laughs) (laughs) anything but phone sales. Oh, I can't imagine a worse job than that. You know, there was, there was, you know, all sorts of, of blue collar type of roles. And, and, um, funny enough, Fast forward about three months. I'm I'm in the uh, dorms up in northern Utah here at uh, Utah State, and I started getting desperate for a little cash. You know, I wanted to take out my girlfriend at the time, and lo and behold, call centers are always hiring, right? Yep. So <laughs> I walk into a little call center in Ogden, Utah, and um, I told myself I'd work there for one week. I'd get one paycheck, and I'd be out. And, uh, I just liked it. Yeah. I liked it. I started liking the people that was very hodgepodgey, you know, different backgrounds as everybody knows in call centers. It's, it's kind of, a, it's very much, a, a entry level. Uh, well, uh, it's, it, it's, it, yeah, it's entry level, but you know, at, at my age at that time, you know, there were a bunch of 19, anywhere from like maybe 18 to, to 22, 25 year old kids on a night shift and everybody had really diverse backgrounds. So it was a lot of fun, you know, you yeah. have to, to, to build a lot of camaraderie and, um, kind of figure out what makes people tick. And that's where I started realizing that there's, there's more to this business than just answering the phones and mm-hmm. just, you know, sailing, which, which is really what it does boil down to. But when you get into the people aspect of it, 
that was the only piece that motivated me for many, many, many years. So yeah. quite frankly, that's why I'm still here today. So, so how many years did you end up spending? Cause I know, and, and we'll get into it a little bit on what you're doing today, but how many years did you actually spend inside of, you know, managing and inside of contact centers and then walk us through your transition into kind of what you're doing today with, uh, you know, sa- some sales enablement and, uh, training inside sales teams. So, uh, let's see. My, I think my resume would read, you know, I've been with contact centers for about 15 plus years now. Uh, you know, I've done everything from, uh, supervisor, you know, of a, of a 12 person team mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, regional director was a title I held at one point. And then I, I, uh, was recently director of inside sales for another organization where we had, you know, number of, of inside sales reps. And, um, so I, I spent probably 15, 16 years just doing call centers. Um, my role today isn't, isn't outside of a call center. I've just found myself in, um, in a position where I've, I'm able to apply that 15, 16 years of call center, um, experience into, uh, more, more rep slash management development and trying to do, um, kind of course development. So we're working currently today on, on certifications on, um, you know, how do I, how do I, how do I see the end from when I begin as a, as a young, maybe salesperson? Um, sometimes that phone can be a little bit monotonous, but if I can see that there are, um, opportunities to grow and develop in terms of my, um, my, uh, acumen mm-hmm. and there's, and there's checkpoints along the way. That's what I find most, most meaningful. And back to that kind of personality and people driven component of the business. Right. Now that's what gets people excited. That's what they start lighting up for. Yeah. Big commissions are awesome. Everybody loves them. And frankly, that's probably what, you know, the majority of this, this industry would say is, is the big driver. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's people. Yep. And I'm fortunate to be in a role now where I, I really get to spend all my day developing people. Excellent. Uh, well, Sam, thanks for sharing that with us. So to kind of introduce the, now that we know where you come from and, and kind of your background in it, um, uh, to introduce the topic today, guys, uh, for the listeners. So we're going to be talking about a variety of, of sales tactics, best practices, uh, and, and not just specifically to, you know, Hey, you're a call center agent on the phone selling anything from, you know, security protection or credit card protection, or, you know, even, uh, some of the, the crazy e-commerce, uh, you know, free trials that we see out there, weight loss and different things. But, uh, we're, we're going to be walking you through, um, a few different, a few different things in terms of how to recognize, you know, we're going to talk about sales cycles. And uh, that'll be a question that I ask Sam, cause there's a variety of sales cycles, right? Uh, if a normal telemarketer, uh, inside of an outbound campaign, you're going to have a relatively short sales cycle, right? You're on, you have somebody on the phone. It's going to be five minutes, maybe three to five minutes. If you're lucky to, to catch their attention, uh, into a more complex sale into which I believe Sam you're, you're working more into now is where, you know, you're selling some of these inside sales teams are selling uh, software. The sales cycle typically is a little bit longer, three months, six months, depending on the size of the, the corporation they're selling into. And so kind of that uh, we're going to kind of walk through uh, the difference between call, uh, selling inside of a contact center versus uh, kind of a inside sales team, like you mentioned, um, and just a few different things there. So to open it up, uh, uh, Sam, I want to ask you, you know, what are the because this question that I'm going to ask is going to go across uh, the, the variety of sales teams, the sales teams that sell inside of a contact center, the sales teams uh, on an inside sales team selling software, whatever it may be, you know, in your experience, what, uh, what are some of the key elements to a high performing selling team, right? What, uh, what does that boil down to on, on some of the most successful teams that you've seen? What do they do day in and day out that make them perform and make them successful? Uh, well, I, I, I hesitate to say there's a silver bullet, you know, I, I don't believe that there is. I think that it's a, a combination of, of many bullets, mm-hmm. if you forgive the, yep. the metaphor, I think, um, I, you know, I come from the world of, of process, you know, my first, my mentor, my boss, my, my, you know, the, the guy that taught me this business was very, 
uh, process oriented. And I think he's been on your show. Yep. Um, it was, it was pounded into me at a very young manager age. And, uh, you know, the, the funny thing is, is, is just like as kids, you know, you kind of get out in the world and you're like, well, maybe my parents didn't really know what they were talking about. I'm going to do it my own way. And you get burned real fast and you start thinking about well, maybe my parents knew what they were talking about after all. Yeah. Uh, I, I learned that quickly. So I would say that, that some of the key elements is obviously talent. Obviously, there's a, a level of, of sheer, um, you know, there, there's got to be a level of education. There's mm-hmm. got to be a level of, of innate acumen as you come in the door that you either have some sort of, of maybe it's just personality to begin with. If we're talking really that entry level, yep. uh, some people can be just kind of born with, with charisma and personality. Um, well, cause I, and I'll stop you right there. We'll dive a little bit deeper into that. So, cause, and I'm sure you've seen it as well as that I've seen is, yeah, you're right. You have some people coming into the industry where, you know, they may have, when you say educated, it may or may not mean obviously a, you know, a, a formal degree from, mm-hmm. from yeah. X. I mean, there's people that come into this job that are, you know, maybe high school dropouts. They then get their GED, but they're because of their personality, because of their, uh, I think, diligence in, in yeah. learning the trade. I mean, they rock it, right? Everybody's heard the book smart street smart yeah. analogy. It's, it's the same thing. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I could go, I can think back to my very first supervisor job and I can think of some of the top performers and they, today I still keep in touch with some of them and they're very savvy street smart people. Yep. They've been successful in other businesses. They've gone on to succeed, whatever that is they've done. Uh, this isn't, this isn't a, um, I, I do believe this is an industry where you can come in and be a student of, you can learn how to be, uh, an effective salesperson by reading books and, and going through the manuals. And there's tons of literature out there and a lot of it's great. A lot yep. of it is, um, but unless you have kind of that, that real drive to, um, and passion to make this kind of a, an industry you want to be in it's, it's, it's kind of a wasted effort. You know, it, it's, it goes back to what I said, this industry really does choose you. Mm -hmm. You, you kind of show up one day and realize, you know, I'm, I'm dang good at this. Uh, how do I, how do I continue to grow and develop in this, in this role? So, you know, to kind of tie it back to what, what does it, what does it take to kind of create these, these, um, high performing teams? There's gotta be, there's gotta be a level of synergy. There's gotta be a level of, of, um, you know, a, a, a willingness to continue to develop and grow. There's also got to be a high level of accountability and there's got to be a high level of process. It's got to be a process driven operation where everybody understands from A to Z what exactly it takes for me to, you know, be, it, this is a very, this can be a very coin operated, uh, industry at, at, at times. You know, I think when you get into selling with a channel or selling with, you know, resellers or partners and, and, um, you know, even particular types of customers and verticals within, uh, the customer space, um, you're, you're talking about, uh, a formula, a very formulaic approach, mm-hmm. which, you know, for those of us, me being one of those that are, are more, uh, you know, I, 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 my, as a younger manager, I got a lot of criticism for being kind of that gunslinger. I just wanted to, you know, let's just make everybody feel good. Everybody's going to be happy and we're going to be positive and upbeat. Um, it, it flies in the face of, of those types of people. I had to learn the hard way. You know, I had, I really had to learn the hard way that, that process is what will get you across the finish line. Um, when you start with the ingredients of personality and, um, excitement and enthusiasm and some sort of a, that street smarts, book smarts, a level of that, you, yeah. you really are creating a formula for a, a successful and dynamic sales team. Um, and, and I mean, finally, and, and the, the, probably the most important component, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a, a, a driver within that team. Somebody, the, the entire team kind of takes on this persona of a desire to win. Um, those that are there for the base salary and the, and the, and the hourly paycheck, those are in in absolutely the wrong type of people to seed your team with. Yep. They don't, and they don't last. They don't, but they, but what they do is they create 
uh, friction along the way. So you never quite attain your number. You never quite get over the hump. You know, you've, you've basically, um, filled a seat with somebody that's just kind of enjoying the ride and not willing to really get a paddle and, and row the boat. So, uh, identifying that right up front is, is critical in my opinion. No, I I think that's excellent. And and one thing that I want to touch on and, and kind of go back to, um, you know, you mentioned obviously having being, um, uh, uh, you have to have the head has to be right, right? The, the super or the manager who's driving the team, uh, going back to the process, you know, I'll share an experience. I, I don't know if you were, uh, if you, if you knew this. So actually after we had worked together, um, I took some time and I went out and did uh, door to door sales, right? So I sold uh, door to door out in Columbus, Ohio <laughs> and uh, first time experience, uh, knocking doors, well, knocking doors, selling, right. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I viewed myself and still do that. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm a very outgoing, you know, determined, yeah. uh, but man, t- talk about following process. We had a process even on the doors and this, again, this is why it, I think process translates over into the different verticals. It doesn't matter if you're on the phones selling whatever product to a customer, or if you're out knocking doors or on an inside sales team, you know, we had a process every, every door that we knocked on, I, you know, I don't know how many doors we knocked on on average, I don't know, 50 doors a day, if not more. Um, and the process was the same, right? We, we had our opening pitch. We, our first step was to try to get in the door. Once we got in the door, we, you know, show them the product. Once we go from product to paperwork, paperwork to, to the qualifying call, qualifying call to the, you know, there was steps, there was a process, right? And what our manager always told us is you could knock on, you know, 70 doors and you could follow that process to a T and you could get shut down 70 times. And if, as long as you stick with that process eventually, right, because you know it works, it, it, you're going to be successful. But if you try to change that process, and, and changing the process isn't bad if, if you know it doesn't work, but what happens on that 71st try if you throw the process out the door, you know, that 71st person that, or the 71st door that you knock on, that if you would have followed that same process and would have ended up being a sale because you got whatever discouraged or because you're, you know whatever reason you, you abandon the process, uh, you, you then go 71 doors and, you know, end the day on zero knocking doors. So I think that, uh, following the process translates over into no matter how you're selling and whatever product you're selling. So I, I think that's, that's a, that's a good key point. Yeah. Uh, just, just a quick comment. First of all, I think, I think every salesperson should have to do door to door sales <laughs> and a flavor of outside sales and a yeah. flavor of inside sales yeah. just to, kind of complete the package and, yep. and have a little bit of a reverence for the craft, yep. you know, uh, <laughs> I have, I have, so, I mean, honestly, some of my best salespeople over the years have all come from door to door. Uh, it's a, it, that's a, that's a, a gritty business where you really learn that tough, that tough skin. And, um, you know, when somebody says they're not interested and they have a little bit of angst in their eyes, you can actually see it as opposed to <laughs> hiding behind a phone. Uh, so I, 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 you know, my hat's off to, to door to door folks, but I think, you know, back to, uh, just, just a quick comment on process. You know, the, uh, one, one of the things that I see a lot in inside sales, you know, in call centers specifically is the, um, it's kind of this tragedy of the commons. I've, I've stolen a phrase from, you know, my social science, uh, professor, but I've, I called it, I started coining it the tragedy of the commons with respect to, you know, new hires that come out, they are overwhelmed with the process, you know, whatever that process might be, you know, whether it's, you know, in some of these processes and even processes I've seen most recently are very complex, you know, with dealing with the CRM, dealing with the product, dealing right. with, you know, channels and partners. And I come into a scenario and you know what, I just am drawing a blank. So I'm just going to start winging it and I'm going to start throwing stuff at the wall. And now my personality's out and I'm just desperate for somebody to talk to me and something to stick and boom, I, I close a deal. You know, I just kind of trip over this yeah. deal. <laughs> like it, the golden, it lands the on me, deal. right? Yeah. yeah. It's a, you know, some would call it a bluebird. I wouldn't even call that a bluebird. I'd call that like, I just tripped over this, yeah. this deal. And maybe the, maybe even the customer was like feeling sorry for you and like, Okay, I'm going to throw this kid a bone because he clearly doesn't know what the (laughs) crap he's doing right now. Um, And everybody's seen it and everybody's probably done it. And so the the problem with that is that now 
in my mind, I've decided, well, that process doesn't work at all. Yeah. I just closed it on my own. Yep. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm a pro. Nobody needs to tell me what to do. <laughs> and so I spend the next, and now if my manager's out of process, not checking on me and spot checking, listening yep. to my calls and, and really coaching me, if the manager's out of process, well, now I've just created this behavior that, that just starts taking on a life of its own, yep. you know, now, Oh, he's such a great salesperson. He, you know, he just kind of falls in these deals. Now we start sticking new hires with them because they're great and they don't even, I mean, they don't even follow anything close to the process. The actual process. Yep. So it's, it's a slippery slope and it's something that, you know, when I train new managers, it's like, and even new reps, it's the first thing I, I interview for up front. Like this is a process driven, uh, op operation. Yeah. I'm going to expect you to follow A to Z and these people out here that look like managers, that's what they're going to be spot checking on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then you go push them in the process and everybody on down. So excellent. Um, and, and just to throw this at you. So do you, do you, uh, in your trainings and, and in the roles that you've held, is there any one specific process that you follow? There's a bunch out there, spin selling, customer centric selling there. I mean, there's like you mentioned, there's a bunch of different collateral out there or is it self, yeah, there's self you know, uh, spin challenger. It's all out there. Yeah. We've uh, we've adopted a couple um, over the years. Um, Have you found one that works better I, than, I, than the other? In your opinion, obviously. No, right? I, I I can't say one. I, I mean, because I've I've tried to apply different methodologies to different sales motions. Unfortunately, you know, if we just look at it from a purely scientific mind, that's yeah. not like the most right. <laughs> That's not the most <laughs> sound way to approach the business. Um, but, you know, sometimes these things, they, they kind of take a flavor. Uh, I, I would say that I, I, and I, I'm probably not the first sales manager to Frankenstein a bunch of different methodologies together right. and, and take some, some best practices. Um, but certainly I think things around, you know, your, your time management is key. Um, you know, understanding pain with the customer and how to, um, you know, really, um, you know, it, it sounds bad to the untrained ear, but really exploiting pain a little bit with, with the customer and, and helping them see that yep. what you have is, is really the, the antidote for that pain. Yep. Uh, there, you know, that that's kind of what it boils down to in my mind with all selling, uh, if, if you can find a need and, yep. a, and address it. Yeah. So, and a lot of times, uh, like you mentioned, it may be a need, uh, that they don't even know they have, they need yeah. or have right oh unperceived um, need is the biggest need yeah. out there in my opinion yeah. you know they, that's why we that's why we sell you. so many tchotchkes and on the holidays <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows they need half yeah. the stuff they buy very good well sam i, I appreciate you coming on the show again uh, just to recap for the listeners uh, th i think three vital um principles that we covered and again guys this is this is not just specific to call center teams uh, but across sales teams in general, no matter the product you're selling, right? Obviously, Sam uh, talked to us. Uh, we talked talked about personality, the the attitude coming into it, process, following the process, and then you have to have uh, the right leadership and accountability, right, uh, to go along with that. I think that uh, that goes a long way. So, Sam, um, you know, if people want to 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 find you, reach out to you. What, what's the best way to to get a hold of you? I know you're on LinkedIn. You know, what do you? Uh, yeah. LinkedIn's probably the best way for now. Uh, I'm I'm kind of one of those old school guys. I, I kind of keep low on the social media front, but uh, find me on LinkedIn. I'm out there. Cool. Want to drop me a, a message or or whatever. I'm Excellent. happy to communicate. Excellent. So. And uh, guys, uh, for Call Center Crew, obviously visit our website, callcentercrew.com. Uh, you can find us on the video version there as well as on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening, obviously YouTunes, or excuse me, iTunes and uh, Google Play. One thing I do want to plug in here, guys, uh, specifically for our listeners in the following uh, out of the Philippines and Central America, we're going to be launching our online communities uh, coming in 2018, where you're going to be able to join, collaborate together uh, between agents and supervisors across uh, different countries, different verticals, different companies, share best practices, uh, solve challenges that somebody else might have already solved. Uh, and obviously, I'll be right in the mix there where you can pick my brain. We'll be putting out weekly topics. So more to come on that. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, callcentercrew.com. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Sam. You're welcome. Thanks, Landon.